In this video, we will dive into the process of finding the natural log of zero using a concept I call the virtual unit, denoted as J. This idea might seem unusual at first, but don't worry. We will go through everything step by step, explaining each part clearly so that by the end of this lesson, you will have a solid understanding of how this works. To start, let's recall the Taylor series expansion for the logarithm of one plus A variable, U. The Taylor series for the log of one plus u is an infinite series that starts like this. u minus u squared divided by two plus u cubed divided by three minus u to the power of four divided by four and so on. Each term alternates between positive and negative as the powers of u increase. This series is a well-known mathematical tool that helps us approximate the logarithm of numbers. Now to make things more interesting, we will replace u with a raise to the power of j, where j is our special virtual unit. The beauty of j lies in its unique properties, which we will explore. When we substitute e raised to the power of j into the series, we get e raised to the power of j minus e raised to the power of 2j divided by 2, plus e raised to the power of 3j divided by 3, minus e raised to the power of 4j divided by 4, and so on. This looks just like the original series, but with e raised to the power of j in place of u. At this point, it's important to pause and understand what happens when we raise e to different powers of j. The key here is the behavior of e raised to the power of j when it is raised to even and odd powers. When we square e raised to the power of j, we get e raised to the power of 2j, which simplifies to 1. This happens because of the special rule for the virtual unit j. When j is multiplied by an even number, the result is zero, and thus e raised to the power of 2j equals one. When we cube e raised to the power of j, we get e raised to the power of 3j, which simplifies to e raised to the power of j itself. But this equals negative one because of the behavior of j when raised to an odd power. In other words, e raised to the power of three, j equals e raised to the power of j, and that equals negative one. Now that we have this simplification, let's substitute these values back into the original series. We find that the logarithm of one plus e raised to the power of j equals e raised to the power of j minus one divided by two, plus e raised to the power of j divided by three, minus one divided by four, and so on. We can make this even more manageable by factoring out e raised to the power of j from the entire expression. This gives us e raised to the power of j times the sum of fractions. One plus one divided by two plus one divided by three plus one divided by four, and so on. This series of fractions is actually a well-known mathematical sum called the Riemann zeta function at one, commonly written as zeta of one. So we can rewrite the expression for the logarithm of one plus e raised to the power of j as e raised to the power of j times zeta of one. Now let's move on to the next interesting step, finding the natural log of zero. Based on what we have derived, we can infer that the natural logarithm of zero equals negative zeta of one. This is a curious result because in traditional mathematics, the natural log of zero is undefined. However, by using the properties of the virtual unit J and the Riemann zeta function, we are able to assign a meaningful value to this expression. To simplify further, Let's take the inverse of both sides of this equation. This gives us the negative logarithm of zero equals zeta of one. If we rewrite this a little differently, we get the logarithm of one divided by zero equals zeta of one. This equation is starting to look a bit unusual, but it makes perfect sense within the context of our virtual unit J. Finally, we can express this as the logarithm of K equals zeta of one where k is equal to e raised to the power of zeta of one. Here's the final insight. k represents a special number known as the singularity number unit. This number plays a fundamental role in understanding certain extreme behaviors of mathematical functions, such as when the logarithm approaches zero or infinity. And there you have it. We've successfully found the natural log of zero using the concept of the virtual unit j and the Riemann zeta function. This result challenges our traditional understanding of logarithms and opens up exciting new possibilities for thinking about mathematical functions. Thank you for watching. I hope this explanation helped you understand the concept of the virtual unit J and how it leads to the natural log of zero. 
If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for more mathematical content.